you. Okay, today, uh, so I'm Ilan Balog, I work at the Institute of Physics in Zagreb. Today I'm going to talk to you about a uh, work which has long been in making, so maybe some of the people in the audience know about. Uh, excuse me? Uh, ah, okay, so. Okay, so turn. Okay, do you hear me? Okay. So it's, uh, th this work has long been in making, and uh, it's about non perturbative renormalization group up to sixth order of the derivative expansion. Uh, and it's done in collaboration with Bertrand de Lamotte, Hugues Chatet, and Leonie Canet. She, he, she's also there. Okay, so there are uh, three uh, uh, most important questions we wanted to address in this work. Uh, one, uh, the first is, uh, does the derivative expansion converge uh, in the non-perturbative RG calculations? Does it converge at all? So uh, uh, this means that if we take higher and higher orders of the derivative expansion, will we uh, improve uh, the determination of the critical exponents or not? Uh, the second question is, how do we uh, remove and minimize the, uh, the reg regulator dependence in the, uh, in the universal quantities? So we know that uh, when we, uh, if we deal with an exact uh, theory, then uh, the regulator should make no difference in the calculations. But when we, uh, when we make approximations, then it plays a role. So uh, what can we do to minimize it? And uh, the third question, which is uh, a part of a reason why this, uh, this work has been uh, in making so long is uh, how to remove the dependence of the results on the on numerical details. Okay, so uh, first uh, to tell you the setting that we, we are working in. So we are uh, looking into the uh, phi to the fourth theory, which is a pure Ising model. So uh, basically, uh, it's given uh, with, the, with the action uh, uh, written here. And uh, what you do in the non-perturbative RG is that you take an infrared regulator, uh, which is used to separate the uh, fast from, from slow degrees of freedom. And uh, this, uh, this regulator basically gives a large mass to, to, to uh, modes that, are, uh, the, uh, that have wave vectors that are, uh, that are uh, smaller than some, uh, some cutoff uh, vector k. Uh, and uh, basically d does very little to, to, to the uh, modes that, that have a, a wave vector that's larger than k. And then uh, when you, when you, uh, when you uh, take this uh, uh, action, which is modified by the regulator, then you obtain the partition function that is uh, uh, explicitly dependent on k. And uh, what you do then is uh, you can define uh, the, uh, the, the, flow, uh, the Legendre transform of the free energy, which is uh, gamma, or the effective average action, and you formulate uh, the, the exact flow equation for it. This was done by Wetter Rishi 93, and this equation is written here. So uh, you can learn a lot from this uh, flow equation, uh, but uh, in order to, to get some uh, concrete uh, uh, calculations, you need to do some, uh, some approximations to it. So uh, the derivative expansion is one of such uh, approximation schemes. So it can be considered uh, a natural uh, approximation scheme for studying uh, long-distance behavior. So what you do is you expand in uh, momentum dependence, or to be more precise, in momentum over the cutoff. Uh, uh, wavelength dependence. And what we do is we keep all uh, gamma to the n vertex functions, and we keep the full uh, field dependence. So how does it look? So in the, in the zeroth uh, order of the derivative expansion, if you wish, which is LPA, you take into the, the account the, the effective potential dependent on field, and uh, the, the, the long distance uh, be, uh, behave you, uh, you take to be encoded in this gradient term uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the prefactor that, that does not renormalize. So this is the zeroth uh, order of the approximation. So the, the second order of the approximation, you can do a little better than this, is uh, to take the effective potential and that you, you take this, uh, this uh, coefficient in front of the gradient term uh, now to be a function of phi. And uh, this, uh, this function also so flows, it renormalizes. And uh, uh, ba basically, this is a second order of the approximation. Then you can do a, a little better. 
for the fourth order. So what you have to do is you have to uh, collect all the all the all the functions that are compatible with the q to the fourth uh, uh, with, with p to the fourth uh, uh, of, of the momentum. So uh, you you need to pick the functions that are uh, that are independent with respect to partial integrations, and when you do this. Uh, was done in uh, in the 2003 by Kane and the, and the co-workers. You you find that you have three uh, you have three functions describing the the problem at the order four, and at the order six you do, you play the same game and you find that you you need additional eight functions on top of those at the order four, which is 13 functions in all. So. Then what you do is you, you take this ansatz, uh, or, or any of these ansatzes, and uh, then you enter the exact flow equation with them, and uh, you, you get a, couple, uh, a number of coupled flow equations for, for these functions. So if you're working at D6, you get 13 coupled flow equations. So what we do is, to, to, to get the maximum control uh, over the numerics, is uh, that we, we solve this problem uh, involving these n-coupled uh, partial differential equations. We solve uh, directly for, uh, for fixed points uh, by, by an adapted uh, Newton-Raphson method. So here I show you, uh, just for illustration purposes, how these functions look. So we work in the, in the field rho, which is phi squared over 2. And here uh, it's uh, shown the effective potential derived by rho. Here it's the, 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 the function z uh, of the field renormalization. Here we have four functions that, are, uh, that we have at the fourth order of the derivative expansion. And here are, on these last two figures, we have eight functions uh, that are additionally necessary at the, at the sixth order of the derivative expansion. Okay, so we, we solve for fixed points. But this is not without uh, problems. Okay, so there are a lot of things to be very careful about when you uh, when you when you are working uh, with this. So uh, uh, from the numerical side, we want to uh, we want to uh, have have a results that are independent of numerical details. So uh, we have uh, we have checked every uh, every possibility of of numerical uh, inaccuracy. So. Uh, uh, just to, to, to tell you uh, fast uh, which ones. So, for example, grid range. You need to have the, uh, the, the enough, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, sufficient grid range. So, for example, we found that using a grid range of, uh, which is three or more uh, times larger than the location of the minimum is sufficient to, to, uh, to, to, to saturate uh, the, the, pre uh, the, the precision. And then... For example, the grid resolution is also uh, so important. So if you if you uh, use two cores a grid, then you, you, uh, you, it's it's natural that you lose the, the, the resolution. But the problem also uh, appears when you when you use too fine a grid, then you uh, basically run into at some point you run into uh, addition uh, addition error problems numerically. Then uh, also we checked all the num numerical procedures uh, for integrations. Or, uh, uh, over the internal momentum and also the, the evaluation of the derivatives from the, the discretized functions. And what, what was very uh, prominent at the order six, for example, uh, are the addition errors that, that appear in, the, in determination of the flow equations. So, so these, these expressions are, very, are huge at order six. So, so the problem is now uh, uh, how, to, uh, how, to, how to add them in a computer in a way uh, to minimize the errors. So uh, this requires compactifying all the expressions as much as possible and doing as much partial integrations as possible to, 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 uh, because this leads to cancellation of certain terms. So at the end of, of, the, of this game, we were satisfied to have uh, uh, results which are uh, independent on uh, numerical uh, details up to uh, pr uh, prescribed uh, uh, accuracy that we were looking for. Okay, so when you have gotten rid of the numer numerical details of the calculations, then you are still left with, uh, with several, uh, with, with, uh, with uh, a priori two uh, reasons why you, you should have arbitrariness in your, uh, in your uh, results. So one obvious one is a cho a choice of the regulator. And the other one, which, which seems to also be important, is a choice of the renormalization point. But however, we, uh, uh, as we will uh, write in this paper, 
uh, we, we have a uh, we, we have a nice argument that tells us that basically this uh, arbitrariness coming from the choice of the uh, renormalization point is uh, uh, can be absorbed into a uh, into a prefactor of the regulator function. So this is uh, basically not not a problem. So we only need to be uh, worried about this choice of the regulator. Okay. So. Uh, how to study this uh, uh, regulator dependence? So we studied uh, uh, we studied uh, results in dependence of, of several uh, regulator functions. So we have here uh, the standard exponential regulator, which was introduced in early works by Veterish, and uh, we, we have uh, we, we have also studied a lot this theta n regulator. So let me, let me just say for one moment uh, uh, about this. So uh, uh, theta n. So uh, n is the parameter which, which we can change. It is here. So uh, if n is 1, for example, this regulator, if n is 1 and alpha parameter is 1, this regulator is, is the lithium regulator. But uh, in our flow equations, especially at, at high orders, uh, you need uh, 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 the regulator to, to be a little more... Uh, uh, a little more regular at uh, uh, so so you see that when uh, because you require a certain number of derivatives in q squared of the regulator in the flow equations uh, this this regulator uh, uh, has uh, has them uh, which, which, which are smooth if you have uh, n larger than one so we use n for example three four five or six so uh, then uh, the natural question arises uh, uh, as how to how to minim uh, minimize uh, what what can we do to minimize the uh, regulator dependence within an approximation scheme? Well, you can change uh, you, you can change the re uh, the parameters of the regulator. So we see uh, we see here that uh, both of these regulators are uh, one parameter families of, of the regulator. So. Uh, uh, and uh, basically, what you can do is you can vary this uh, this, uh, this parameter to, to obtain some sort of an optimal value for uh, critical exponents. So, uh, how does this look? So, for example, for the theta four regulator, I show you here uh, the evaluation of the exponent nu, independence of the regulator parameter. So uh, I, I did not show the LPA uh, result here because it's somewhere here. It's uh, 0 0.85 something, and the, the, the curve is very, very wide. Uh, and uh, I show you here uh, the second order derivative expansion, the fourth order, and the sixth order. So the, uh, and uh, for comparison, uh, I, I plot you here the, the conformal bootstrap result. So what you can see from the, uh, what, what is important to notice here is that uh, the convexity of these curves is, uh, is is alternating with the order of the of the expansion? This is one thing. Second thing is that uh, the the curvature becomes uh, more and more pronounced as you increase the the, the order of the expansion. And uh, basically, this means that uh, you can you can fail easily in choosing the regulator parameter in in a high order of the uh, of the expansion. Whereas for the low order, you, you can choose a, a parameter that's not so uh, optimized, but you can still have an equally, uh, e equally not so good result, so to, so to say. And uh, for, for all these curves, uh, there, there is an extremum. So, so we call the optimal value of the, of the exponent the, ex the value of the exponent at the ex extremum. So here we have a, a similar figure, but for the exponent eta. And uh, so ba basically, we have uh, the same game of alternating convexities. Uh, now, uh, and I should note that, that these uh, uh, parameter, uh, optimal parameters for eta are not exactly the same as for nu. But also, we can, we can determine the optimal exponents uh, for uh, eta. So, OK. Uh, uh, so uh, when, you, when you do this, uh, this business, you, uh, then, you, th then you reach a conclusion that uh, the optimal critical exponents, so they, they, they have a certain dependence on the regulator, but this dependence becomes smaller and smaller as you increase in orders. So this is a, a feature that is very, very nice. And this is also true for, uh, for the critical exponent theta. And uh, 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 so, so th this is something that, uh, that, that one should expect if, uh, if the derivative exp uh, expansion is to be well behaved. So here, uh, what uh, I show you the exponent nu in increasing orders of the 
derivative expansion, so for different regulators, as we evaluate, and you see here how these values converge to the conformal bootstrap result. And here you, you see, uh, 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 in the instance, you see the, the, the zoom of this region between uh, order four and order six. So it's, uh, it's pretty uh, nice. And uh, the same is true for the exponent eta. So we see also here, it comes, uh, the, 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 the optimal exponent eta becomes very close to the conformal bootstrap value at uh, order six. Okay, so uh, to, uh, to summarize what, what, what we have learned. So uh, the, 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 the uh, derivative expansion shows some so sort of uh, weak convergence. Okay, so, uh, but uh, uh, this, this, uh, this convergence is weak in the following sense. So, for example, if, if we increase the order of the derivative expansion uh, with a fixed regulator parameter, uh, you, will, uh, you will most likely obtain nonsense because uh, uh, we have seen that the curves are ve uh, become very steep with the increasing order, uh, with the increasing order. so it's, it's very, very easy to, to, to get the, the regulator parameter very wrong. So also exponent nu, uh, nu and omega, uh, they always show a minimum sensitivity point in the parameter. This is important. So this, this, can, this is something that can be counted on. Uh, so, and the convexity of, of curves nu and eta alternates with increasing order. We, we do not fully understand why this is true, but it, it seems to be true. And uh, uh, what is very important is that optimizing the regulator at any order of the derivative expansion gives very consistent values of the ex exponents, and they, they become closer and closer as the order of the, uh, of the derivative expansion increases in dependence of the regulator. So this is a feature that you want. And also, one thing that I haven't shown in figures is that the optimal, uh, optimal parameter alpha for new exponents and, and the eta exponent, uh, this, this difference between this, uh, this value diminishes as the order of the uh, derivative ex expansion increases. So this is something that you should also, uh, that, uh, that we, we are also very happy about. Okay, so now I have told about uh, uh, good things and now a little bit about some things that are not so good. So, for example, our exponent omega is a little bit problematic. So you see here uh, the, uh, the, the evaluation of the PMS value of omega for at, at order uh, LPA, at order 2, 4, and 6. So at order 4, we are, we are really very close to the, uh, the conformal bootstrap uh, value, but this, this might be just a coincidence because we see that at order 6, uh, the value goes off. And, and this, is, uh, th this is what we uh, have. But we... We think we understand. We have certain clues that uh, something about the uh, omega is different. So, for example, we see that uh, 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 the, the omega of alpha curve, uh, uh, th these curves do not uh, alternate with increasing orders. So what, what we obtain is that at LPA, the, uh, the optimal value of omega is at the maximum. At order D, it's at the minimum. At order D, 4 it is also at the minimum, and at order d6, it's at the maximum. So, okay, there is something wrong there. And uh, we also think we have a, uh, we have a reason uh, why, uh, okay, we, we, we might see a glimpse of a reason why this is so. So, uh, uh, so, so you, uh, usually when you do, uh, when, you, when you derive the flow equations of the MPRG, you just uh, put in the, the, the derivative expansion, and you don't worry, for example, at order two, that you have the uh, terms in the flow equations that, that have q to the power four. But this, uh, uh, so uh, when you think about it, this, this term of the order, uh, which, which includes integration of the order q to the fourth, should not be in the first place in the flow equation uh, of the second order. So uh, it should not uh, matter if you take these terms or not. And indeed, uh, this does not influence the, the evaluation of uh, nu or, um, uh, or eta, we, we, we have checked this, but uh, taking or, uh, or dropping these terms is, uh, has a large influ influence on the evaluation of omega. So uh, basically, uh, uh, we, uh, the, the equations at the order six were truncated in vertices exactly in this way, because if you, if you think about it, when you write a flow equation at order six, uh, you are going to have terms which are in order q to the 36. And these, these terms, 
may make a huge, uh, uh, there is a huge combi uh, combinatorial explosion of such terms. And uh, basically to, to compactify the, the equations in, an, uh, so in, in a human form, you, you need to drop all these terms. And uh, this is what was done in the order six, but uh, the, the propagator was not expanded, so we, we think that maybe something might be there. And this is on our to-do list. And also, to, just to mention briefly the, the uh, d equals to two case. So uh, the, the, here the derivative expansion is uh, in a worse situation a priori because uh, the same model uh, uh, has, uh, at, at a larger dimension, it has a, a, a eta uh, exponent, which is smaller. And in, in a certain sense, one could say that uh, the derivative expansion is driven by, uh, is, is, is better if the exponent eta is smaller for the same model, which, which means that in larger dimensions. So, but we are not much worried about this because within the non-perturbative RG, there is BMW scheme, uh, which is much more suited. So our preliminary results in D equal two are, are well off from the exact ones. We, we have obtained uh, just uh, 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 very, very crude results. Uh, just to give you a hint of this, it's uh, new, for example, 1.06, and eta 2.238, whereas it should be 1 and 25. And uh, the problem in D equals 2, uh, in D equal 2 is much more uh, demanding, and we are also studying this at the present time. So to conclude, I conclude with this table, which, uh, which includes the comparison uh, of the present results with the, with the, with the uh, previous uh, uh, precise evaluations of the, of the uh, critical exponents. And, I, uh, and it is by my, my firm belief that omega can be somehow uh, mended in these uh, results because it's uh, sticking out as uh, uh, worse than, uh, than the others. So thank you for your attention. With this, I want to finish. Thank you very much.